Hello. So has everybody <coughs> finished writing their cue sheet? Who hasn't? So we will start. Now the attendance is less, so if I call out, that person is more likely to be absent. So there are less than 50% people present here. So I will call out if the person is here, <coughs> they can <coughs> attend, otherwise we will go to the next choice. This we are starting from the first group which was sitting here. Since some people have made their presentations, but I don't remember who, so the record is not with me. So if I repeat by mistake, please point out. The puzzle of motivation, Nilang Shah, Venkata Naga Kailash, Vivek Kantaria. Uh, hello everyone, my topic was power of introverts. So this topic was already present, so stay with me, don't sleep. Uh, uh, this topic was delivered by Susan King and she first started talk uh, with her childhood experience uh, in which uh, when she was in the camping trip, she was the only one carrying lots of books to read on the trip. So like he was like outsider in the group. So her ma'am, her like a guide, uh, taught to her that uh, try to be in, be in a group. So like uh, try to be with everyone else and take part in the group activity. Then she realized that uh, while growing up, she realized that all of our schools and office structures are also to encourage the group activities. Like in the schools nowadays, more and more assignments are on the, with the groups. Uh, even the assignments based on the mathematics which require the own thinking are also part of the group activity. Our office structure are like also open open offices. Uh, so uh, while uh, we have to work in the like crowded area, so which is not very encouraging to own thinking, which might lead to the group thinking. So in the group thinking, uh, most of the time, the main idea was uh, influenced by the most most influenced person. Person, so like which has the some person have, may have uh, good communication skills. So uh, the main idea may be influenced by that person. So uh, which is not a very promising sign because someone like the introvert which. Uh, who doesn't like to express his idea very much, uh, his idea might be like uh, not be ex exposed. So he tried to say that, uh, uh, he tried to say that uh, introverts are also have the very good skill and he gave the so many examples of the people uh, who are very successful and uh, who was like uh, introverts. So he tried to say that uh, group activities are not really bad, but uh, we must encourage the individual thinking also. So because nowadays all the, our society structure is to encourage the extroverts, not the introverts. So main idea was to like the keep balance between the two of them. Uh, extroverts are also needs to encourage to their own thinking. They can't always have the, uh, ability uh, support of the all of the others they might uh, they also need to be own sufficient so balance between them two are much needed uh, good morning all so my topic is uh, teaching kids real math with computer the speaker is conrad ulfram okay so you all know that math education is really important uh, for development of any society but the problem is that the, the way math is taught to the children is not a foolproof way. I mean, uh, many people, they are afraid of math. So, I mean, the way math is taught can be changed. And the change can be done through the use of computers. Well, uh, if we think about this, there are uh, three main steps in 
learning math. One is understanding the real life problem, converting those to mathematical formula and solving those formula and converting the result back to the solution in real life problem. So in school, we spend too much time in doing calculations, but this is a really dumbed down way to teach math. I mean, computers are more efficient than us in doing calculations. So instead, we can just let the task of doing calculation and I mean, we can, the, the computers can do that. We can focus on the other two steps, that is converting the real life problem to a math problem. So, I mean, uh, many people think that if computers do all the calculations, then, I mean, it's a, we are teaching math in the wrong way, but it's not the case. I mean, there are other fields like engineering, biology, which have benefited a lot by using computers. So why not math? And also uh, the present course structure, if we see in the school level, the topics in math which involve difficult calculations, they are taught later. For example, calculus. But those topics can be, I mean, if we learn it in different way, like those can be learned much more easily through some real life analogy. So if we use the other way of teaching math, then the topics can be restructured. And also um, programming, programming uh, can play a big role here. I mean, instead of doing some silly calculations, the students can learn math through the use of programming. I mean, the things, I mean, they, they can be, this can be learned in much more logical fashion if it is done through programming and with the use of computers. But uh, there is one downside of this approach also, like computers, um, even if for simple calculations of daily life, one person cannot just depend on computers to the calculations. Like if we ask somebody to do a simple multiplication, he cannot just take out a calculator and do that. I mean, people should have the ability of doing simple calculations using their mind. But both techniques have some positive and negative sides and we have to choose the positive sides properly so that the learning math and teaching math can be a whole new experience altogether. Thank you. So good morning, everyone. Uh, my name is Shashwat. The topic uh, which I study for this is uh, sixth sense technology, which is developed by Pranav Mistri. So what uh, I saw a video TED talk. So what in the first few minutes of the video, he talks about uh, every time we interact with the digital world, suppose we use mouse or a keyboard to interact with the digital world, then that might not be very effective. Huh? So why not to, uh, what he did, he opened a mouse and he opened some uh, screw uh, wheels in it that how it interacts with the world. So he created, using those only mouse balls, he created a uh, device which he can wear on hand and then he can interact with the uh, digital world. Like suppose he can uh, move his hand here and there in the computer, then it will be detected in the computer. So what he did, why not to bring the digital world to the real world so that we can interact with the objects in a way in which we interact really. So during these last 10 years, he developed a technology, like we will be wearing a camera and a projector will be there. So what will happen? So the uh, projector will be there. So the camera will be, the camera will uh, sense your gestures. So whatever gestures you will do, it will, it will sense it and it will uh, draw projections accordingly. Suppose, uh, so you can uh, make a gesture to take a, uh, to draw a wristwatch here and you draw a wristwatch and you project it and you can see the time there only. You can use any machine, you can use your hand as your uh, touch pad. Suppose if you say I want to call someone, it will project the buttons on there. You can print, uh, type it and it will call someone. And you can uh, do a gesture to take a photograph, it will take a photograph for you. It will uh, sense it. So such technology is there. And uh, you can use it to for uh, office purpose also. Suppose you can write a, uh, write data on a sheet of paper, then do some gesture like this. 
get transferred to computer, it will transfer the co uh, data on the computer. There, there are lots of example I don't remember exactly but uh, now I think this technology is a boon to the society means uh, first of all the disabled ones would be able to express themselves very well suppose those who are not gifted uh, the ability to speak so they would be express themselves very well means suppose they can just use gestures and they can uh, express they can draw a say, they can project a some, something like a paint program and they can uh, just move their hand here and there to write something or to draw something and uh, one more use I found is uh, uh, one third away, so, okay. so what Pranamisi wants he wants to spread this uh, technology more to the society he wants to focus more on that rather than focusing on research and then later releasing it to society. He has made the code available, so means it is open source. I don't know where is it, but he said in the video it is open source code. And uh, yeah, now I think, yeah, we should be, yeah, Pranamishti is an alumni of IIT only, this IITB only. So we should be proud of such people, such Indian people spreading these ideas to the world. So, I think heads off him. He spread his whole life, he's 10 years to develop this technology. And uh, yeah, one more use is that we don't have to carry all these cell phones when we are going and uh, or a camera when we are going traveling somewhere. So all this can be done using the that fixed lens technology. So that's it. Thank you. Hello, I'm Sushmita. So my talk is about robot with soul. So in the talk, the speaker basically showed the various experiments he did. And the, in the first experiment, he uh, created an actor, uh, created an actor robot, which will act uh, in accordance with its co-actor. So uh, if the co-actor is angry, then uh, the actor robot will uh, nod his head more rigorously than uh, in other ways. Another experiment, he uh, created a music musician robot. So in uh, that case also, when the co-musician uh, uh, plays a note, then the musician robot also plays the same note. And in the experiments, the main uh, idea was that that we think as robot of uh, only a mechanical device, which can only uh, execute the various ins instructions uh, programmed in it, but it can also make some decision of its own and make some mistakes and learns from those mistakes. So uh, in that way, robots can be made more uh, uh, lively. So this was the main thing. And so uh, we can, the robots can be made more visible its present uh, presence is more uh, acceptable to the spectators so good morning friends and my topic of discussion is the rise of cricket and the rise of india so what is the primary reason for which cricket became famous in india is the only equipment required to play cricket is just a plank of wood and a rubber ball which you can find anywhere so this fa the the popularity of cricket started growing when an historic event occurred in Indian cricket, that is in 1983, when we won a World Cup. Although everyone used to play cricket, but everyone now started talking about cricket, exploring about cricket, finding about, uh, following their icons. So uh, already the format had been changed from test cricket to ODI cricket. Uh, then England came up with a unique idea of T20 cricket. And England have this habit of de developing a game and letting others become a master of it. So they came up with this T20 cricket and India adapted this, that technique to a city versus city primarily. Now this was pretty new. Everyone was first cheering for India, India, India. 
now they started to cheer for teams within india they had rivalry among the indian states so the scenario was changed uh, this attracted this the popularity of ipl attracted millions of dollars of investment and even before a single ball was bowled a single ball was bowled there was around 2.3 billion dollars of turnover this significantly contributed to the gdp of india publicity was done in the form of celebrities actors started taking the fields and the most awaited chair leaders everyone started enjoying them although secretly although publicly criticizing it but everyone admired it then ha huh, cricketers which used to get around 50 rupees or 100 rupees per match started getting millions of dollars so the enthusiasm for cricket among the players even more increased and what an irony a foreign player comes to india to earn money that's the biggest thing which we never thought could be possible so why i'm talking about all this this is because a just small change in format of the game like bringing the odi cricket to t20 cricket changed the entire face of indian cricket this interview this contributed to billions of dollars of turnover and the significant contribution of gdp so i just want to just to conclude that a small change along with a proper marketing strategy can be sold well and can succeed thank you hello everyone the topic of my the talk which i watched is kids take charge by kiran sethi the talk basically starts with the word contagious according to her every feeling is contagious the feeling of inspiration the feeling of passion and even laughter is contagious and she told uh, even she told that the feeling of i can is also contagious but why only some of us have the feeling of i can so to consciously empower the kids by having the feeling of i can she started her school which is riverside school in ahmedabad the working basically the working pattern behind the behind her school is they basically bring the real life uh, concept into her school like if they want their children to know about the child rights and child labor they don't uh, theoretically tell them okay this is uh, child right this is so they let them uh, roll incense stick for hours and what the feeling uh, children get is they feel that what basically happens to be a child labor and in this way they feel uh, more towards the society so uh, this is all about how she embed this real life concept in her school then she took her ideas outside uh, her school and basically uh, starts an initiative which is known as approach this approach initiative is uh, basically taken first in the ahmedabad where they make the city you, uh, children friendly so in ahmedabad in 2007 what they did is they blocked basically uh, the busy road of the ahmedabad and Uh, convert them in convert it into the playgrounds for the children where they can play they can uh, they can show their activities so in this way basically children get the uh, get the acceptance from the society and if the uh, society now accept the children in the future the, uh, they will give to the society so uh, in the same way they basically she also started uh, a, a initiative which is known as design for change she uh, basically spread this initiative in around 30000 schools in india where what they uh, what she told is children to do four steps first of all feel a basically problem which bothers those children and then basically uh, and then imagine a solution to it then implement the solution and spread the word to the uh, spread their initiative to the world and Uh, so uh, this initiative get so uh, tremendous uh, response from all over the india children found solution to each and every problem like starting from the child labor to the female feticide to the education all so the basic idea of her talk is if we basically believe in children by letting them show their power show their energy and we feel and we believe in them by saying they uh, they can Uh, they will uh, sorry they can then they should live it my tdd talks is about uh, the occurrence of tsunami and how badly the people were affected and uh, what is this the mental speculations of the author uh, about uh, the activities of god uh, and uh, what he could have done us uh, and he shows us uh, the sympathetic perspective of uh, 
um, the victim, sorry, the sympathetic pers perspective of the author and he further suggests that some kinds of uh, practical help uh, needs to be given to him rather than quoting uh, uh, what is this many things uh, saying that uh, God is not, uh, God is the one who is uh, culprit and uh, God is not in control uh, and all these things. He further says, what is this? He further, uh, uh, what is this? Uh, uh, spe speaks about a series of bad ha bad events which are occurring in this world and says that uh, what is this? God is the only culprit who is doing all this. Uh, uh, God is the one who gives us and God is the one who takes to, to takes back uh, uh, takes back of this. And he says that uh, he he he, he speaks a series of events and. Uh, uh, he says that God is an uh, God is an agent. God is a superhuman being, and God is known by His mighty acts. And uh, infinitely, He has many infinitely connections with all possible uh, uh, with all possible jivas. This is this is what we call jivas. And He says that uh, God can be realized in silence, meditation, passing emotions, inner conversations, and uh, a series of uh, uh, things He says. But then, first of all. Uh, are we trained sufficiently enough uh, for disaster management? This question we need to ask ourselves. As an institute, we, we are uh, trained for disaster management. As a IT company, they have many uh, uh, many strategies that in case uh, earthquake occurs, in case uh, fire occurs, what is this? What is the best thing uh, they need to do? What is this? Is, uh, uh, evacuation from the shortest path, uh, all this is. But then are we trained to handle uh, all these kinds of disasters? It could be. Uh, this this variety of problems could be what is this some kind of uh, 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 depression financial problems health problems and all and uh, our scriptures have very very clearly quoted uh, how to solve each and every problem in a very very systematic way and we are leading a very pathetic life without following the inj Vedic injunctions and scriptures it could be even on this see I'll tell you uh, we uh, there's nothing like Hindu religion Muslim religion Christianity and all this the only one dharma exists that is Sanatana dharma. Sanatana means eternal. That 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 which is eternal is uh, will be will be eternal. What is this? Nabuto uh, nabavishyate. Uh, before and after, independent of whether you like it or not. And uh, uh, I, I at this point I will ask you one uh, uh, only one question. How many of you heard from uh, uh, heard that from uh, uh, allopathic and Ayurvedic doctors that uh, we should be drinking water after uh, half an hour of consumption of uh, uh, consumption of food. How many of you heard it? C can, can, can someone uh, can someone people raise a hand? Okay, uh, I, 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 I'm sorry to say this is uh, a clear manipulation by all these people. The Vedic injunction, the shloka corresponding in the Veda says, "Ajirne deshadamvari, jirne vari, balapradam, bojane amritamvari, bojanante vishamvari." The immediately after consumption of uh, the food, the water acts like a poison, and after uh, you, if you if you give a gap of two hours. The same water will act like a medicine. Unfortunately, we don't follow all this. And if we follow all the injunctions uh, and uh, the relevant, uh, uh, the relevant, uh, 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 what is this procedures which are followed in the scriptures, we will lead a very happy and wonderful life. Ye, be, it, be it any kind of desire, good desires, bad desires. You, this, you, you have a very systematic procedure to what is this to uh, uh, attain them. Uh, if you have very good desires, you can. Uh, for, uh, you can uh, uh, you can work very hard and uh, very hard and God will be giving it at a appropriate combination of space and time. W what many people call it as karma, it is actually you will be uh, you will be getting according to guna kala karma. This is very clearly mentioned in Srimad Bhagavatam. And all varieties of problems in this world are related are because of the uh, because of the attachment we which we have for the material world. Uh, uh, this has been uh, uh, this has been told by uh, uh, Gautam Buddha also that all the problems you are facing is only because of attachment. And Srimad Bhagavatam also says in the 5th canto 10th chapter 24th to 26th text uh, in which uh, Jarabhartha instructs King Rahagana and uh, how, what is this, how to solve this problem of uh, uh, detachment. We have everything, we, everything, you name a problem, you have a solution in scriptures. Unfortunately, we are running behind all the material solutions, uh, what will, uh, which will uh, uh, solve them suboptimally. But then we have optimal solution in the scriptures. It's better we go for the scriptures and uh, uh, and learn the things. See, and uh, if we see our uh, technology and all these things, these are the things which we are building. Our senses are limited. 
we cannot even sense what is happening in the next room how can we sense something which is very very at the uh, atomic level or which is at a very very high level when we take uh, some of the basic uh, things which are given as a thing as a base and we start proceeding from there what is this it is something like we are not starting from the scratch if we proceed from there we can lead a much happier life and much uh, better life it is something like uh, what is this the knowledge of uh, nuclear weapons the knowledge of uh, what is this flight and all this flight corresponds with the pushback memory which is present in, uh, in in the ramayana and uh, uh, nuclear weapons if you see the kurukshetra war uh, uh, all this nuclear weapons how they are manufactured and how they are launched are being given by uh, a, a series of events and people still even ma mentally speculate uh, all these things how to do all these things see uh, if someone has uh, a, a this okay uh, I, 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 I will la like to conclude that uh, rather than uh, going by a varieties of uh, uh, solutions which people give us uh, uh, in this material world this the problem is that uh, ma if majority of people are saying that if this is the way to go we, we, we go by that way without realizing that we have the we have a lot of gold and a gold mine of information in our scriptures that's it